All right, welcome back everybody to the channel. We've got a real fucking doozy on our hands today. Holy shit. So for any of you weirdos who lives under a rock, analog horror is essentially a VHS style horror where it's almost feels like found footage in a way. Whether it be in a supernatural sense or a realistic sense, it gives you that unnerving feeling when you're by yourself in the dark. And I am a big fan of this style of horror. In fact, one of my favorite movies to come out of last year was Skinema Rink. Well, that's not traditional analog horror. Analog horror is mostly attained to the internet, whereas that was a actual theater experience. Either way, it evokes that same feeling that analog horror gives off. But I've enjoyed many, like Gemini and the Mandela Catalog. These are plenty of really good ones that I have enjoyed. But, however, there is one that has caught my attention and has been an absolute fucking joy to watch. That being Urban Spook's analog horror series, The Painter. If there's one way I can describe this series, it's, uh, it's basically this. Oh my god! Oh my god, what the fuck? What the fuck? Fuck! And you know what, just before I begin, fuck you Urban Spook, you made my paranoia worse. <laughs> But also, I love you because this series is genuinely amazing. I remember when my girlfriend told me about this and I wasn't so sure about it. And I was like, oh, okay, another analog horror series. So I kind of just took it with a very big grain of salt. Like, ah, it's not a big deal. Um, that was a big fucking mistake because the moment it starts, you're greeted with this. Just a quick warning before we get into this, this is a very, very, very big spoiler video. If you have not seen The Painter, I am linking it in the description below. I am imploring everybody to see it and watch it. It's great. Uh, yeah, don't watch this video unless you've seen The Painter. I mean, unless you don't give a shit, obviously, but I highly recommend watching The Painter first. But anyways, on to the spoiler talk. Right off the fucking bat, we are greeted with such great atmospheric tension and buildup because we get the inside of the story. We learn that there is a killer and they like to make portraits of their victims. This combined with the very unsettling creepy music just builds an atmosphere that just makes me so giddy. And you'll notice that um, this series is very fucking morbid. You got people getting their teeth ripped out, you got people getting stabbed in the puss, I mean like yeah, they're really hammering at home how fucked up this series is. Now, unlike other analog horror series where it almost feels like you're viewing the perspective of the cameraman, this is just a simple showing a picture in text style, which a lot of people would call that lazy, but I think it's perfectly fine. Like, it's very simple and effective, and it almost feels like we are a fly on the wall peeking in on an investigation into a very fucked up person and I think that's really cool. It has a easy flow of information and it gets you hooked immediately, especially not just with the music but also just with the the fact that it's so morbid and it's so fucked up that you really, it, it pokes that curiosity in you a little bit. You may not enjoy it per se, but you really want to see where it goes and that's honestly the whole experience in my opinion. It's I have been glued to this series ever since I found out about it. And these self-portraits, man, I mean, back to the whole this series feels lazy, quote-unquote, um, whoever says that just clearly doesn't understand the amount of work that goes into artists who work on paintings and shit like that, because even though these paintings are fucked up, they are incredible. I mean, like, actually fucking great. They're very unsettling, for one thing. I hate how everybody has, like, these dead, lifeless eyes that are just piercing into you and the titles are just mm. and speaking of those paintings keep daniel and Corey in mind they will show up later so that's the first episode down the next one is the lighthouse which funny fact i saw on their story that this episode was inspired by a lot of different things specifically robert eggers movie the lighthouse and it was also inspiration from an episode of the moomins the moomins actually inspired a few other things in this series apparently We'll get to that later. This episode, as per usual, starts with great atmospheric tension. And then we learn about Bill Collins. Yeah, this is going to go great. And already we see our first baby death. And yes, I said first baby. To be fair, it, first born baby, I should say, but we'll get to that later. This is where we see the investigation progress. After the paintings have been founded by the police department, we see their continuing investigation. The cops find the Collins family car and another portrait in there, which is of their two-month-old daughter that they found in the basement. Uh, yeah, um, shock horror, I tell you what. It's shocking, oh yeah. Then they find their way to a lighthouse, which, uh, 
Yeah, remember how I said keep Daniel in mind? They find his corpse in there! Yay! And they find other things, and they're really fucked up. Uh, it's the Collins family, their photos, and them on amphetamine. I want to fucking die. I remember watching this late at night, and I genuinely had like a, a reaction that was just... Oh. Now, let's move on to the next episode, which is in the walls i i don't want to do this man i don't want to fucking talk about not only look listen i have had to i've looked over my back so many times i am so fucking paranoid because i have these locked in i can hear my surroundings and it's fucking with me and i'm talking about this really fucked up series i i can't do this but in the walls we we are seeing another character that was referenced in faces uh y'all remember cory the fuck toy Cory, yeah um <clears throat> yeah it seems like with every episode this killer gets more and more deranged and this one uh it definitely takes the cake but that's the thing i really enjoy about this series is that it genuinely does like play on your paranoia like genuinely it will make you start to question everything like i shit you not i double check if my doors are locked <laughs> and i didn't really want to get into this because i think it's really unnecessary but this episode has a bit of controversy around it especially surrounding uh the painting uh fuck toy cory because in this episode if i had <laughs> I, I gotta explain this as best as i can um there you have two siblings Margaret and Corey. They're both 11 years old, and of course, Corey is the one portrayed in one of the paintings. They... Let's just say, um... Picture if they took Margaret's upper half and spliced it with Corey's bottom half, and they stitched it together and ripped off a certain part, and, the, and then you've got a sloppy human sex doll that's the best way i can describe that and of course people have taken note of that and have said that that's uh fucked up that you're putting child a sexual assault in a analog horror series like you know canceled you bullshit you know the, the typical shit um here's my opinion on that and i understand that this is not indicative of everybody everybody is going to feel different about this but i need to get it out of the way horror is horror it is going to be subjective on how you enjoy it, obviously, but I get that it's not fun to hear about, and I understand there are actual victims of sexual assault, unfortunately, and that this may be triggering, but at the same time, if we're going to cancel ha any type of horror because it has disturbing content in it, um, that should be all horror, not just analog, not just this series. Every horror should be canceled and just never made again. If we're going by that logic, it's like, yeah, I don't approve of it, obviously. I mean, I'm not a fucking monster, but you got to understand that there are some things in horror that are really fucked up, and you may not like it, but that does not mean you have to watch it. And it doesn't go into vivid detail. Like, here's a good example, actually. Uh, the movie A Serbian Film has a lot of very gruesome shit in it that goes into some very, very, very vivid detail. And even though, yeah, there are actors and they're not actually subjecting each other to this torture it's still like damn what the fuck this kind of just has you fill in the blanks if there's anything i can really criticize them for is just not putting a warning before the episode but if that's the worst that it can get i mean it's really not that big a deal again i can't speak for everybody but i think the whole controversy around this episode is a little stupid on to the next one, shall we? We have the next episode called The Clue. This is where we meet Detective Sean and Tom Harris. So, Tom Harris. Uh, yeah, y'all remember Wax Doll Tom? Yeah. He was buried in a pile of candle wax, and there was another arm in there that didn't belong to him. And it's not identified yet. So that's weird. Sean has been on the case for a while. And, uh, yeah, he had his house broken into and he got killed. His portrait is weird because it's called the man in the pipes. And I've been questioning, like, what the fuck that's supposed to mean. But I have a feeling he got grounded up and shoved down a garbage disposal. But I could be wrong. Who knows? But he left a very interesting clue, to say the least. He wrote the number two in his blood on the wall. And I did not know what to make of this at first. But with the recent episode that just came out a few weeks ago... I understand what it means, but we'll get into that later. But we also get another look at the killer, which is, um, 
Yeah. And now you begin to notice something here. We've had many looks at this killer. This one looks a little different because we had the self-portrait, one of the photos retrieved with the Collins family, and what was captured on Corey's camera. But now they look like they're more of a monster. And that's what got me thinking that maybe there could have been two perpetrators. Oh, and it just looks so fucking... Oh my god, I'd be so scared. But anyways, that kind of ignited my brain. I was like, maybe I could entertain the idea that there are two killers. Next up is Witness, and uh, as per usual, they keep up the creepy atmosphere. In this one, we meet Tina, Flora, and Jack, and they are on a road trip, and then they are reported missing. And, uh, yeah, when they find their car, um, they find this. These paintings, man, they're really fucking with me. And then we find out uh, Tina is alive. Jack hasn't been found yet. And uh, her sister Flora's face got smashed in with a hammer. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a good one. One thing that really fucked me up about this episode is that even though the investigators were around and they, they were searching the woods that they found her in, there is a painting that was hastily put near the car. And I was like, oh my god. Like, they're, they're getting bold. Or either there's something else going on, but I was, I was so thrown off that they were easily able to put it there and escape, and they couldn't find him. Like, oh, I just got chills up my spine. What the fuck? And yay, another painting. And I, what the fuck did they do to this guy? And then, of course, we get Tina's description of the perpetrator. Uh, we get a police sketch, and wow. That's cool. Yeah, so we're kind of getting a little deeper. We're, we're trying to, we're starting to catch up to this killer, you know? They smashed in a kid's face, they made a sex doll out of a kid, and they're murdering people, but it couldn't get worse. I don't think it can. It fucking can. We have pigs, and right off the bat, we have fight or flight music that plays. Yay! I am not having spine chills right now. Oh my fucking god, holy shit. Because not only is the music intense, but the situations are really fucked up so yeah we find out that investigator ian ford is missing with his family um they find his barn and um his wife may she died of internal bleeding and she was in a stall with a horse that was high off of sildenafil if you don't know what that means <laughs> Please don't look it up. Yeah, uh, oh, this is so fucked, man. And then we get the moment that really, like, it was a real jump scare moment, and it almost made me, like, it made me, like, jerk out of my seat. Like, I wanted to fucking run. Uh, it's when we see the head of Fiona Ford. <laughs> chills it's so bad uh, and a great revelation they wear the victims fucking faces yeah. <laughs> and of course they find more paintings and the implications are horrible like oh my fucking god and then of course uh they find a uh, a film reel they were able to recover some footage because uh, of course they were and it had me thinking maybe the killer is making snuff films because if you put the pieces together this is just a little theory, it's nothing too crazy, but if you put the pieces together, it seems like they watched, like, one hentai, and they were like, oh yeah, we can do that. They probably saw the Berserk episode, and they were like, yeah, we can recreate that. Just with, in real life, however, that sells. Yeah, but anyways, uh, keep Janice, Paul, and Zeke in mind, just, you'll see why. Now we are up to the most recent episode, which is titled Family. Yeah, this probably is the most fucked up of all of them, because... We have a 911 call made by an Isabel Jackson, and they made their way to a crime scene, and it wasn't her. It was a different family of Paul, Janice, and Zeke. I forgot to mention, um, yeah, they were going to have a baby, so uh, add that to four things to keep in mind. It just keeps getting more fucked up. Oh my god, you'd have to be an actual psychopath to come up with this shit. And so far, I think out of all the episodes, this one has the best music overall. According to Urban Spook, the series will only have ten episodes, so we still got three more to go, but... Uh, as of this episode, it has the best music overall. Actually, funny enough, this is the episode that was also inspired by the Moomins, because the music in this scene is the very similar to the music in the Moomins, or at least in one episode of the Moomins, I should say. And it's uh, really cool. Mm -hmm. 
And not only do we learn this awful shit about the family, but uh, Zeke is missing. And actually, funny enough, his painting portrays him as almost looks like he's a dismembered head. Makes me wonder if he had cut Corey up and maybe put him in different areas. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's an interesting theory to posit. But the weird thing that stands out is that there's a painting that they found in the family's house and it only has the word pipes on it. Every other word was marked out except for the word pipes and it looks a little similar to Detective Sean. Maybe there's a correlation? And then we get to Isabel Jackson's house. They find her husband Bruce dead and uh, yeah, Infinite Maw Bruce. <laughs> Implications. And then we learn that this killer has a very sick sense of humor. Cause come on man. Blowhole Isabel, I live where I can't breathe and I eat without teeth. <laughs> What does this guy think? He's the fucking Riddler. But this episode does the unthinkable. It confirms that there are more than one killer. And in fact, it implies there are two. So, remember when I said that Sean wrote that two in his blood in his in his home? Yeah, um, it was right there in front of us. That, that was the clue. But it does confirm that there are two killers. And uh, yeah, I don't know if it's a like Bonnie and Clyde situation, but we'll... I'll save some more theories for later. Yeah, uh, we probably get the most distressing thing I've ever heard in an analog horror series. It is Isabel Jackson's 911 call. Um, yeah, uh, there's the chills again. I, I, I. No, but genuinely though, it was whoever did the voice acting for this needs a fucking let them cook again. Like that's all I gotta say. Let them fucking cook because this was phenomenal. Like absolutely great voice acting on their part, and it was just. Ooh, it, it got to me, man. I'm not going to lie to you. But we've done it. Here we are. Seven episodes in to Urban Spook's analog horror series, The Painter. And I normally don't review things before they end, but I cannot stop thinking about this series. Like, it's genuinely, like, the one analog horror series that's gotten a visceral reaction out of me. Because other horror, it seems very passive. And almost like you witness it in the moment and it kind of just leaves your head. This has never left my head. Like, I genuinely, like, I joke around. But I genuinely have a problem with paranoia overall. But this show has genuinely made my paranoia worse. And, of course, like, no hate to the creator because I they did a phenomenal job with the horror. That's how good this shit is. Like, it has me checking over my shoulder sometimes. I don't even feel comfortable being by myself in my apartment. But that just attributes to how amazing they are at making this series. I understand it's not for everybody. And if it's not for you, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with saying I don't like something. But it's definitely for this guy because I, I'm i a fan for life. Whatever they decide to do later on, whether it be do another analog horror series or something else entirely different, fine by me because i will be there to watch day one that is the painter by urban spook we've got three more episodes left and then it'll be over but i am excited i don't want it to end but i'm really loving the journey we're on and i cannot wait to see how it ends urban spook you are amazing and i'm not expecting like obviously don't take this as me just trying to get like a reaction out of you like oh you know thanks for watching man blah blah i i don't care about that i genuinely wanted to make this video because I love your series and I think you're doing a fantastic job with horror. And again, whatever you decide to do, I am fucking there. I am imploring everyone to watch them. Because their series is incredible and I think it will be a treat. It's not for everybody. But I'll tell you what though. If you want shock horror, it's definitely shocking. With that out of the way, I'm going to go rest. <laughs> but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Urban Spook, you're amazing. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day, wonderful night, month, year, etc. And stay spooky. Bye, guys.